Welcome to Learn About Law. My name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law, and today we're going to talk about the Illinois Rules of Construction for Wills and Trusts. So a rule of construction is a presumption that a court applies uh, to determine if there's vague, vague language in a will or trust, what a normal person would have meant by that language. So we'll talk first about how courts resolve ambiguities in wills and trusts generally, and then we'll talk about what the rules of construction are. We have an article and video uh, at learn-about-law.com that deals with general resolutions of ambiguities in wills and trusts. So we're going to do this kind of the quick and dirty version here, uh, but you can go to that article and video if you want more information. So if there is an ambiguity in a will or trust, meaning that a clause in the will or trust can be interpreted by reasonable people multiple ways and that different interpretations lead to different outcomes, uh, either party that's uh, impacted by the ambiguity, if there's a dispute about it, can file something called a construction action. A construction action is basically a lawsuit with the end game being a hearing at which the court will determine or try to determine what the creator of the will or trust meant by the ambiguous language. If there truly is ambiguous language in a will or trust, uh, all of the parties that are impacted by the language can introduce evidence outside of the plain language of the document as to what the creator intended by the, the ambiguous language. This is known as extrinsic evidence. So it's evidence other than what's just in the words of the document that can shed light on the meaning of the ambiguous language in the document. But sometimes extrinsic evidence isn't enough to shed enough light or to prove what the creator actually intended. And in these cases, courts apply rules of construction to determine what an ordinary person in the creator's shoes would have intended by that ambiguous language. So you, you get away from trying to figure out the actual creator's intent um, by introducing evidence of the intent, and now you're talking about what an ordinary person would intend. To the extent that a court can figure out what the creator actually did intend through extrinsic evidence, this will always uh, control over these rules of construction that talk about what an ordinary person would intend. So here's what the rules of construction are. Courts presume that the creator intended to dispose of all of his or her property through the terms of the will or trust as opposed to letting some of it fall to intestacy. Intestacy is what happens when there is no valid will or trust or when a will or trust doesn't deal with certain types of property. Uh, so a lot of wills or trusts uh, have a residuary, excuse me, a residuary clause that provides that all property that's not specifically divided up will go to be divided in such and such a way. If that's missing, then there might be ambiguity as to whether a particular piece of property is meant to be divided according to the will or according to in state intestacy statutes. Courts prefer to divide things according to the will or trust terms and assume if there's ambiguity that all property is supposed to be divided that way. Courts also assume that the creator understood what the law was at the time that the will or trust was created and intended the will or trust to be valid and legal. If there are two interpretations and one of them would lead to a valid will and trust, uh, and another would lead to an illegal or invalid will or trust, courts will favor the interpretation that leads to the legal and valid document. If two unambiguous clauses in the will or trust conflict with each other, uh, then the later clause will control. So the one that occurs later in the document, courts will prefer over the one that occurs earlier in the document. If specific provisions conflict with general provisions, then specific provisions control. So this means that if a will or trust says, I leave all my property to Sarah, and I leave my car to Bob, Bob's going to get the car because that's a more specific provision than all of my property. Uh, courts presume that heirs of equal degree should inherit equally. So heirs of equal degree mean children. If, if a creator of a will or trust had three children, all of those children are heirs of equal degree. Uh, as opposed to children versus grandchildren. So if there's three children uh, and it's ambiguous as to whether uh, one is supposed to get more than the others, courts will presume that they're supposed to inherit equally. Now, again, this is only if the language or and the intent of the creator is not clear from either the language of the trust or extrinsic evidence. Uh, courts prefer heirs uh, over parties that are not related to the creator. So heirs are people who would inherit if there were no will or trust, People like children, spouses, parents, siblings, 
closely related people will get preferential treatment if there's ambiguous language over people who are not closely related uh, to the creator. Courts presume that words have the same meaning throughout the document. So if in one clause the creator makes it clear what he or she meant by a word that can be interpreted in multiple ways, that word will be interpreted that same way in a later clause or earlier clause where the meaning of that word can be taken in two ways. Uh, courts also presume that words have their ordinary common meaning. If, if a word has multiple meanings, they'll use the meaning that is common parlance as opposed to a more obscure meaning. Finally, courts will disregard punctuation if this makes the meaning of the document more obvious. So those are the rules of construction, and those only really apply if there's an ambiguous uh, phrase in the, wor uh, in the will or trust that can lead to different results based on uh, multiple reasonable interpretations, and if there's no evidence that is sufficient uh, to determine the actual intent of the creator. So if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below this post at learn-about-law.com or below the video on our YouTube station. If you need some help, please feel free to give us a call, 630-324-6666, the 630-324-6666. We offer free consultations in many areas of law, and we have several geographic locations for your convenience. If you found this helpful, we'd love it if you'd subscribe to us on YouTube, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts or watch your videos. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Click the subscribe button for new videos every week and download and review us on iTunes. Visit learn-about-law.com for other legal-related articles and videos. Visit our business podcast and video blog, seizurebusiness.com. Call us at 630-324-6666 for a free consultation.